Hello everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations and you with Simon today and in today's video we're going to be looking at uh, the new moon in Cancer and this is for the solar eclipse that's going to be taking place on the 2nd of July uh, 2019 and so of course um, this is a really big uh, new moon simply because it's a solar eclipse um, there's a lot of stuff happening on the planetary nodes so collectively there's stuff going on and I think in general, when the sun moves through the constellation Cancer, we do we go through a period of time where we actually work through a lot of the core um, themes that I think the human race has come to work through in in this kind of um, storyline that is the human experience, um, which I'm going to you know attempt to elaborate a little bit further on uh, in this uh, video today. But generally speaking. Um, I'm sure most of you have been feeling a lot of intensity uh, recently with uh, the closing pattern of this um, the, the the solar eclipse that took place at the beginning of this year as we prepare for the next um, pattern that will hold us uh, up until the end of this year and of course uh, in the first weeks of January where the next set of eclipses will occur. So there's there's quite a lot to talk about and I'm sure that, like I said, most of us, most of you are feeling really, really intensely at the moment and um, my attempt today is to offer some value to the way that you're processing the nature of reality and hopefully by the end of this um, conversation that you can walk away with something that you can integrate into your life and make sense of or at least um, try to manage this energy that's going to come through us right now in a way that uh, doesn't completely uh, put you out as it were okay so let's go over to uh, the chart and um, let's go see what's happening over there and today i decided to to say hello to all of you um it's nice to always just uh you know see you for um, time to time i like to to just sometimes just sit down and, and do these these uh, videos um, just sit down and talk and so that's why I tend to to not have my camera on but today I thought it was um, fun to you know to show up all right so on the chart at the moment I'm gonna, let's draw our attention to the the astrology um, so what we've got here is the south node 17 degrees and we have Saturn at 17 degrees so there's a very clear connection at the moment with this um, solar eclipse pattern okay Something that's also really interesting as well is, of course, here's the, 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 the sun and the moon. Let me just move the cursor that you can see it there now. Um, in fact, if I do this, let me get a color so that everybody can see laser pointer. Okay, fantastic. Now you can you should be able to see. There we go. So sun and moon, 10 degrees uh, Cancer and on the north node. So this solar eclipse pattern is landing on the nodal axis of our evolutionary like path okay which is indicating a really really big thing this is this is a huge thing it's not just a, a random experience this is definitely going to affect us in a really uh, big way um, and of course the, the the nature of what we're going to be affected by is a point in our experience like with ourselves where we can no longer move forward with what we have been doing up until this point. So, and, and then to be, be even more specific, it's around fear primarily, okay? So the fear is linked with the Saturn energy over here, the Capricorn energy here, and then the Cancer archetype that's sitting over here is reflecting the necessary emotional um, confrontation that has to occur in order to process through the emotion that has been blocked. Okay, so that's the thread I'm going to work with over here. Blocked emotion, right? Stagnant emotion that has crystallized, and I'll go on and explain why that's the case as well. And the need to uh, interact with those blocked emotions, right? To, to actually process through them, so that you can be liberated from the deep subconscious psychological attachment and the weight that is brought about by this emotional block okay 
another way to to understand this would be that if you say for instance uh, have like a a drain in your house okay and it gets blocked what occurs when you put more water down the drain that's blocked right the water is going to rise 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 because it's not going to actually drain and at some point it's just going to start flooding and that brings chaos that brings uncertainty that brings um, panic that brings um, flooding as it were so the same things occurring here where energy wants to move through you and you are a vessel for energy to move through you where you have blocks energy hits the block okay and then it just it just stays there or it, it moves in a different direction but the, the blockings themselves create these barriers in which psychologically they are it's just clogged up so psychologically you 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 fear doing things because of uh, an uncertainty or uh, the, 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 the fear itself is a representation of the energy that is stuck in that place, whether it be an unprocessed emotion, mo well, that's what it is, it's an unprocessed emotion. So let's just keep this very simple here. It's an unprocessed emotion, and the fear shows up and says, this is what needs to be confronted. This is what needs to be processed through, okay? Um, so this, this symbolism over here of the South Node and Saturn and the solar eclipse occurring on the North Node and Cancer over here is this illumination of processing through your fears and moving through them and growing through them so that maturity is the end result. Okay, so, so the end result is maturation. And maturity and maturation is associated with Capricorn. It is the process of something growing into. Okay, so you're growing into um, your ability to be responsible for your life. You're growing into taking charge of your life. You're growing into making your life more uh, empowered. Okay, and that comes through, you know, having to, to process and digest uh, big feelings that you experience. It comes through the ability to uh, establish firmer foundations within your internal um, self, in other words, inside of you, right? That strength that then becomes a reflection outwardly in your life, right? And these these are these are really really big lessons. The energy at the moment is is not it's not a, a an energy of you know, fluffy, white, wonderful, this, this is what you could be doing. It's an energy where it says, look, you've got an opportunity to really grow into a more empowered self, a more stronger self, um, a more res emotionally resilient self, um, to grow out of shadow patterns where it's uncomfortable to accept responsibility for your life and to withdraw and retract your um, power from things that you have placed power in. And then when that power, uh, or should I say, when those outer circumstances change, they affect you directly because of your emotional connection. And so therefore you become disempowered or affected by it. So this energy is very serious at the moment. At the same time, it's not saying, it's not like, there is no kind of like, oh, you should be doing this. It's, this is what's available to you right now. Like, this is what's potentially available to all of us right now. And we can choose to uh, distract ourselves from it and not take advantage of the energies, the potential energy for growth. Or we can ride the wave and see how we are maturing at really, really profound rates at the moment. You know? So I'm going to stop there because I've got a lot to say and on this, this nodal axis and this solar eclipse. So my thread there is the potential opportunity to grow, right? To mature, to, to take responsibility for your life, right? To realize that this is, your, this is your existence and you've got some form of control over it in the way that you respond to experiences that come to you. And you've got responsibility to process through your fears and your shadow as it were the the parts of yourself that are very that are deeply uncomfortable to own and 
the capacity to, um, and this is the second phase of this conversation, the capacity to realize your dreams. Okay. So what has this got to do with Capricorn? Well, the relationship between Capricorn in the natural zodiac, right, and Pisces is the dynamic relationship between awareness and meaning and purpose and how that gets channeled into form so that the manifestation of that dream or reality or idealization can be experienced emotionally and essentially digested. Okay. So yeah, we have Neptune in Pisces at the moment. Okay. And again, just pause what you can use this information for in terms of something positive is look at where these symbols are landing in your personal birth chart. Okay. This is where these things are taking place. So for instance, for myself, all of these symbols are landing in my 12th house. Okay. This is landing in my second house, right? This is landing in my sixth house over here. So to me, when I synthesize those archetypes, I come to an understanding of what that means for me, where I am right now. So what am I processing through? Well, I can tell you that with Jupiter at the moment sitting at 16 degrees Sagittarius, okay, and this Neptune sitting at 18 degrees Pisces, well, this is sitting here in my second house and this is sitting in my 11th house, okay? All right, and this is in my 12th house. And what I'm processing through for me personally is psychological patterns or beliefs that I've internalized as a child that I have um, linked my self-worth to, okay? And so I'm watching how certain reactions, cycle old patterns of psychological reactions will present themselves when life prevent, offers me a situation to interact with. And so the direct experience of how this energy um, is moving through me and showing me the blocks where I have a fear, where there is an unprocessed emotion, undigested emotion, where those things are existing. And so this energy prods at it and I see, oh, okay, I can see how I've somehow on some level felt that this was true, which it's not true. So what I chose to do was I chose to, to interact with the fear. And what happened was as I interacted with the fear, I was liberated from the hold, the emotional hold that it held on me, that was preventing me from feeling like it was possible and safe enough to experience what the situation was or the belief in myself or the action that was necessary to take. Okay. That's just one example of something that, it, that occurred for me. So when you look at this, these, this chart, superimpose it onto your own personal chart and understand where these types of complexes are coming from. Of course, we all have our own unique story and that's what this is really about. The, the ability to see how your unique story is being evolved with these transits. That's, that's one way to look at it. Okay. So let me come back to, to, um, the, the dynamic of, of Neptune representing meaning and dreams and Capricorn representing the ability to channel your choices every single day that eventually leads to the foundation or the formation of your dreams. Okay. And the only way for you to truly be able to fulfill your dreams is if you realize that the dream remains a dream unless you actually formulate it into something that you actually, like I said, make conscious choices to um, not pursue, but to experience and uh, live the awaking process of the dream or of the, 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 the meaning that you wish to give. Okay. So it's the, 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 the seed here that I'm really reflecting with Neptune and, and Capricorn at the, at the moment is that if we have a dream or an idealization about something we wish to experience in our life, nobody's going to give that to us. The universe and the world doesn't owe us anything. That's a Capricorn statement. So we have to experience, we have to take charge of our life to be the captain of our own ship. And when we can accept that power, which can be very difficult because it means realizing that there is a lot of weight on your shoulders to um, bear, you know, you, you, there are things that you have to be responsible for in your own life. And I think that 
that's something that only comes with uh, a certain percentage of people that are fortunate enough to have been told these deeper spiritual truths that were trained, not trained, but but that, that you were almost supported in. For a lot of us, including me, for instance, you know, these types of things had to be learned through experiencing consistent like, ah, oh, I want that, but I can't, I just seem to can't get there. And there's a missing piece and the missing piece is, oh, I have to take charge of my life. I have to, I have to like realize that this is, this is my life that, that I'm living over here. Nobody's going to come to my rescue. I have to walk the path myself. And that's a big thing to contemplate. That's a big thing to, to process through, you know? And it, it doesn't mean that, that your life is not going to be meaningful if you don't do those things. It just means that you can experience deeper layers of your um, self and more empowered layers of yourself when you are able to see that there is a part of yourself that can grow into more meaning through awakening to your self-power basically. And I think that a lot of us at the world right now needs to understand that, needs to, to, to see that, that we need to step into what is our truth and step into something that is really truthful and authentic for us. And that's one aspect of, of the Capricorn message. Now, this solar eclipse suggests to us that a path to growing up means getting rid of um, childlike fantasies that are, in a sense, ungrounded, okay? So I think I spoke to somebody um, while just recently, actually, where what I was suggesting, and I see this a lot with Leo Capricorn energy, I have a lot of Leo Capricorn energy in my chart, and that is that a lot of the time when we're, when we're children, we experience the world in a very sort of like, in a, in a way of fantasy, in a way of innocence, in a way of that there's meaning and possibility and potential and we we don't necessarily see the boundaries that are formed as we get into adulthood so if we when we reach our saturn return for instance there's a period of our life where we process through letting go of um childlike fantasies and and um ungrounded meanings okay and what we have to do as we grow into our maturation process is look at all of the parts of ourselves that our inner child wants to experience and then develop a, a personality or a self or a structured self that can give the inner child the creativity in a, in a way that understands the maturation world. Okay. So simply put, it's like creative intelligence. So, when we're children, we are less likely to have objective reality. So we're, we're very sort of focused on ourselves, which is why children can, can be very self-absorbed and very narcissistic in their nature. And that's obvious because it's that they're, that they're interacting with what's here. They're not here to, to, to look at the other person consistently all the time and take into their consideration, their empathy and their feelings, etc. They're here to discover themselves in the most primal sense early on. When we get older, we, we become more accepting of our actions and what the consequences of our actions are. And we learn to interact with people. And we learn to understand that another person has their perspective. And, you know, we learn to share. We learn to understand these more mat maturing qualities, okay? But if we struggle to integrate the, 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 the kind of like imagery or imagination of the child into the adult self, then... What happens is, is that we have um, underdeveloped uh, adult selves, which is the capacity to see the objective world and see your, your take charge of your life and be responsible for the choices you make. So that, and then there is the inability to actualize the dreams because there's always a kind of like the world is horrible to me or it's always something that's occurring to you, right? And so I encourage every single one of you that um, has watched that that you know that's that's watching this video, of course, to go and watch a video, a YouTube um, video, by James Hillman, okay, and he talks about abandoning the child. It's really really fascinating. It's really really fascinating, 
And you'll see what I mean when you listen to it in terms of understanding the childlike perception of reality versus the, the world that where you want to integrate your child into your adult self so that your child still gets the things that it wants, but you're, you're parenting your own inner child based on your parenting style, based on what you want. And this is a lot to do with the necessity for maturation, for growing up. Okay, and that's this Capricorn energy over here because we're going to have a solar, a lunar eclipse uh, next after this solar eclipse. So we have this potential to grow into something that's more nourishing to us with the solar eclipse as well, right? And so how do we do that? Well, one of the things that seems to be blatantly obvious in the world at the moment is the oversensitivity of... Um, human beings and the, the the kind of like polarization okay at the moment between people that perceive reality this way and people that perceive reality that way okay so and this polarization seems to be very very clear of a very deeper issue that exists within the collective psyche okay so here you have these symbols sitting in capricorn but a layer beneath this process is the planetary nodes of Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter. Okay. Jupiter at the moment is sitting right bang on the planetary node of Uranus. Okay. And then you have Neptune at the moment squaring the planetary node of Uranus, and it's also squaring Jupiter. So we've got we've got a lot of current energies at the moment touching the substrata. Of the collective psyche and so we go one layer deeper into the underbelly of what has been the memory of our experiences as a human race okay so a lot of that buried material stuff that sits over there that's very dormant until planetary energies like this for instance touch them or you experience something in the world that triggers that subconscious memory and then it comes to the surface and then it spikes into your physical field and then you experience it and you're trying to process it. This is essentially what happens with reality is that there is, there is the, the conscious field that's just here and dormant within that conscious field is the subconscious, is the memory of our entire sort of existence. And bedded within that memory field are experiences of positivity and elation and joy and there are experiences of deep violations and abuse and mistrust and trauma and all of these things. And so when they get touched, they spike through. And of course, your body is a conduit, which then holds the vibration of or the frequency. And that then becomes what you experience when you have trances. So there is a tremendous amount of energy occurring on the on, on you know, planetary energies, like deeper substructure. You also have right down here, Mercury and Mars sitting on, right? Sitting on the exact square of the planetary node of Chiron, right? So I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I'm showing you that this solar eclipse has so much potency with it, so much potential, so much like sensitivity and pressure. It's like there is so much going on at the moment. All of these symbols are hitting the exact north node of the humanity's evolution, right? So you have the south node of Pluto and Saturn here, and then over here, you're sitting on the north node. This is the evolutionary intention, the, the nature of what we as a human race experience for us collectively, right? They're sitting over there, okay? And then you also have Uranus on, on the actual south node of Chiron. So there's there's Mercury and, and Mars, and here you have Uranus, right? Chiron is even squaring the, the, the sun-moon energy over here. So there's another element of um, sensitive points being lit up. So to me, even though there doesn't seem to be a lot of squiggly lines over here, the layer beneath this, this chart, there's just illumination, right? So what does that represent? What does that reveal to us? And I think... This is what this is the angle I want to take it at. This is the, the, the approach that I want to take. Okay. Well, firstly, it's very clear and very evident that we are in the Western culture 
rev like seeing the collapse of a, a, a structure of society, right? A, an old paradigm of struts and structures and um, building blocks and formations and everything that holds a civilization together is essentially just kind of returning back to to the feminine principle as it as it falls it's involution as it were naturally speaking embedded in the structures of the civilization is all of the memories all of the imprintings all of the 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 experiences that are contained that are held within that structure of society and that's just sort of as the, as the system falls, as, the, as everything collapses, so what evaporates out of that, or what gets purged out of that, is all of the distortion. And we're caught up in that. We're caught up in this, this intense, like, chaos of things just floating around us like this. And it's so easy to get caught up in the storm. Because when you're caught up in the storm and you know that you're caught up in the storm, it's like, it's just, it feels like chaos. Everything's ungrounded. You're disorientated. There's a lot of things just moving around like this and it's very uncertain. What things don't get processed, right? So um, grieving processes that are, that are not done, okay? Um, repression, right? Distortions, abuse, all of these qualities that are very difficult to process because they d require a high degree of maturity okay all of this comes to the surface and we get caught up in it and when we get caught up in it what we do is we experience more darkness between in the human race and then that just makes us even more angrier and more uh, unable to find um, reconciliation and healing during this period of intense like chaos and as human beings our ego structures are collapsing with it and so it's not uncommon to feel like there is chaos and Armageddon and everything's going to fall apart and get sucked into the narrative whereas the key during this period of time is to actually retract inwardly into the self and begin forming an incredibly strong baseline foundation within yourself, okay? The way that you go about doing that is you retract your, um, your need to interact with the outside world with your views and opinions and, and things like that until you have come to really feel and clear out any attachments, any psychological security attachments to belief structures and perceptions that are not of your own, that you haven't thought through yourself. As an example, right, this Jupiter on the south node, right, there's so much collective ideology at the moment that held within the ideologies and the possession of being held in ideologies that there's just, we can't communicate as human beings, right, and this whole entire stuff has just risen to the surface, we're caught up in it and we can't communicate, we can't find each other, we can't listen to each other on some level, and there's a lot of people that are lost, there's a lot of people that are feel uncertain about things, right? And it's not lost in the sense that we're always lost, but it, you can definitely feel that when you interact with the chaos, you have friends and family and, and close people that you kind of align with in terms of your tribe as an example, and that makes you feel like community. But outside that will, outside that barrier of comfort and security and protection, there, there isn't any. And so we feel unsafe in that process. So we, we kind of stay where we feel safe. And that doesn't give us any ability to grow either because we're just kind of reinforcing to ourselves what feels secure for us and we just stay in that place and we don't explore, we don't expand, we don't go out and um, try to seek to understand what is occurring as an example. So the Cancer Capricorn axis in terms of where these symbols are over here reflect a, a shift in our self-identity and the necessity to process through fears and emotions that hold us like in, in, a, in a place of, of, of um, like a holding pattern, basically. We need to confront these, these blocks. We need to confront our own psychological biases and attachments to our wounding and to our unresolved anger. 
We need to process through those things. We need to acknowledge those things. We need to allow ourselves the freedom and the space to be able to feel vulnerable with all of the wounding that is that is materializing itself out of the the, the kind of um, collapsing structure, as an example. And how do we do that? Right? How do we allow ourselves this, this space? Because you know that if you go onto the internet and you share your point of view that contradicts another person's perspective, all hell breaks loose. It just becomes a, a, a pure reflection of the amount of disconnect that we have as a human race at the moment, not because there's something wrong with us, but because of the nature of where we have come from and what we've been doing. It's just, we haven't had deep spiritual kind of like experiences and um, healing tools and mechanisms and things like that in, in, in the substructure of our reality. So of course, we're going to struggle with basic human interaction at a, at a level that, that allows our big feelings to be present. I mean, you as an adult over here, let's see if you feel comfortable talking about your feelings all the time. Like we can do it to a certain degree, but as soon as somebody triggers a wound within us, it, you know, the, the polyvagal um, or the, the, the vagus nerves detaches itself, your prefrontal cortex um, shuts down and, and all of a sudden we're in a very primal state, we're in a very primal place. So how do we do these? How do we talk about these big feelings? How do we allow ourselves to digest and process and work through things that are very complicated and complex at the moment? How do we do these things? Community. Community is the, is the, is the only, um, and groups, small groups of about four or five people where you can feel safe enough to open up a dialogue of talking about big feelings that allows you to process through the things you've experienced in life, process through, process through the, 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 the abuse maybe that you've experienced or the shutting downness or the capacity to, to not feel safe. You, we've got to, you've got to try to, it's important to see if you can arrange yourself with a group of people that you can have an, a safe space with to communicate your ideas and perspectives where you can allow them to unfold because the internet is not a place where that takes place. It's just, it just, it's very, very chaotic there. And I think that we need to begin finding ways to effectively communicate our deep seated emotional material so that as we release it, we become lighter in the process and more empathetic and more able to listen to the other human beings experience that even if they're coming from a different point of view, probably share the same feeling of anger. The result or the experience of what caused that anger is different, but there's anger there. And that anger can be subconsciously projected or it is, it's just projected. And so we need to resolve those things and you can see that, you can feel that. And we need to have these big conversations. And I think that that's what the Mars conjunct Mercury here is. Again, these symbols are not, they don't have a storyline as in here's what's going to happen. It's me interpreting this. So my interpretation of this Mars Mercury energy is the capacity to realize that we need to give life to our emotions so that we can process through them and feel safer and more emotionally resilient to know that we're okay when we've got big feelings. Because this is as a human race, we've shut it down completely. You know, because of things that are just very overwhelming and a lot of trauma and stuff. And that's what I think Chiron in Aries at five degrees is, is suggesting to us as it squares the sun and the moon and it squares, um, you know, the, 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 it's not necessarily squaring the south node over there, but it's, it's very clear that that Chiron is suggesting of new ways to discover ourselves and to find open spaces to talk about our big feelings so that we can allow ourselves to experience being childlike in our creative capacity and to feel safe with that while knowing that we have a surety in, our, in ourselves to explore what we feel vulnerable about. As an example, this is one of the reasons why this, this person called Brene Brown is, is so um, sort of accepted at the moment because her message is about the very thing that shuts human beings down from really feeling bonded and connected with each other in a sense, you know? And, you know, she's, she has a 10th house Pluto in her astrology. So her Pluto is in the same position as the collective's Pluto at the moment. 
And the, the realization she comes to is the, the necessity for vulnerability and truth through that. This is nothing new for us as a collective way. And the only way for us to really do that is dialogue. But it can't be, it has to be dialogue with, in, a, in a place where safety can be experienced so that you can feel safe enough to explore your feelings without there being criticism or judgment or wrong. And so that you can explore the next phase of that, which is the comfortability in your perception being challenged. And that's another thing that's an issue at the moment, is that it's so easy for your view to be challenged and then to just tell the other person's wrong. And so there's a lot of conflict at the moment, Jupiter on, on the south node of Uranus, where we're shutting down diversity because it's, it, it's the, whatever opposes us threatens our sense of security because of our unre, unresolved emotions. And so therefore, instead of kind of hearing what the other person's reflecting, we are, or trying to understand it at least, we're shutting down and then attacking. And we're just attacking our own race because we feel ultimately uncomfortable in ourselves. And this is another thing that's associated with the capacity for security and inner security is the ability to have big dialogues that are really uncomfortable to talk about and in places and ways that we can process through this because we're not going to get through this this thing if we're just constantly sort of bickering at each other. I think there are more far more complex issues in the world right now than getting caught up in our own emotional material. And so this is about seeing a bigger picture and growing into a bigger picture and working through the ego's damage of un un being unrecognized or not being seen or the necessity for validation and externalizing that. So it becomes the need for other people to validate you and so that you can feel safe versus just, just saying, hey, this is, I I'm comfortable in myself as, as a collective, not just like individuals as an example. Okay. I think that that's, that's where I'm going to end today, peeps. I know this has been a long video, so I really hope that you uh, found some value in this conversation at least. Um, I really encourage you to write in the comments below. Um, I, I'm just, I, I want to interact with you over there, so I'm, I'm interested in, in hearing your thoughts and perspectives and stuff. Um, and thanks very much for your time and, and listening, and thanks very much for you know joining me on this YouTube channel um, process and you know following myself and Jen and what we are attempting to do over here. And have a wonderful uh, solar eclipse um, energy. And um, until the next video, you know, have a uh, wonderful day and um, make sure that uh, watch this video a couple of times if it has brought you any value just to digest deeper aspects of it. All right. So before I go, all I want to do is just let you know that um, if you are interested in uh, looking at the material that we work with, like working with myself uh, and Jen one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the, at the top right now, you'll see like a, a, an end screen come up with our website and come over to our website and see what we are doing at the moment. Look at the types of courses or workshops that we've, we've created in the past that you can use to, as tools to help you process through your feelings. If you're interested in, you know, doing a, a solar return or a um, sort of eclipse reading with us, all of those things are available on our site and you can always you know, contact us. We're, we're always excited to talk to, to souls that are genuinely um, wanting to understand the material and an amazing sense of purpose when we're interacting with a lot of you. So if that's something that is uh, available for you right now and you want to uh, interact with us, um, please do so. And, and the information right now on the screen will come up, okay? All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.